Good morning to all of you. Today's topic of seminar is adrenal atresia and small intestinal atresia presented by me and Anupama. Uh, during this class, we will be dealing with the introductory part and uh, duodenal and jejunal uh, allele atresia. In subheadings, we will be dealing with the etiology, pathophysiology classification, prenatal diagnosis, clinical presentation, differential diagnosis, and management and complication part. Uh, small intestinal atresia has incidence of 1 in 2,000 libers and accounting of almost one third of the all neonatal admissions. In, in these, most commonly caused by the uh, small intestinal atresia and stenosis. Uh, as atresia etymologically is originated from Greek and means not perforated, means complete uh, uh, obstruction. However, uh, stenosis is in, uh, incomplete perforation, uh, obstruction. Duodenal obstruction is first described by the Calder, and the congenital duodenal obstruction has incidence of 1 per 5,000 to 10,000 of live births. Uh, duodenal obstruction could be because of intrinsic obstruction or could be because of extrinsic obstruction. In intrinsic, we will mostly deal with atresia and stenosis. Other are diaphragm and wind uh, web. In extrinsic causes, the, uh, there are annular pancreas, malrotation, and preduodenal portal vein. However, in annular pancreas and preduodenal portal vein, uh, there is seen that uh, uh, there is associated atresia and stenosis which cause actual obstruction instead of outer uh, extrinsic obstruction of uh, uh, because of the anatomy. Etiologically, duodenal uh, obstruction uh, has a uh, not known, uh, uh, no etiology is well known. It is supposed to uh, have a developmental error in early uh, period of gestation. And uh, like other small and large bowel atresia, this is not, uh, not supposed to be because of vascular accidents. And there is no predisposing maternal factors are known. Pathophysiology of duodenal atresia. This is a, a more, uh, mainly involves second part of duodenum. In, uh, during the early developmental uh, uh, part of the uh, fetal life, there is inadequate endo, uh, this is because of inadequate endodermal prolifer proliferation, which occurs in the fifth week of gestation and because of failure of equalization of the solid phase of uh, bowel uh, development. As we can see, this is the solid phase and in further embryological development of the bowel, recanalization uh, occurred because of the apoptosis. It occurs in the 11th week of gestation. Uh, other uh, supposed uh, uh, etiology, uh, pathophysiology of the duodenal atresia includes cell signaling in which sonic hedgehog, uh, hedgehog gene is expressed in gun, uh, gut endoderm, which ta uh, targeting mesoderm. In this, these altered signals uh, display feature of duodenal stenosis or atresia. In new studies, we found that uh, uh, some uh, fibroblast growth factor 10, which regulates the normal duodenal development, and the micro duplication on cro uh, chromosome 6 to 24. These mutations also lead to the development uh, duodenal atresia. Then associated anomalies uh, are found to have almost 50% incidence of the associated anomalies in duodenal uh, atresia. Malrotation and second GI atresia are rare. However, should not be uh, should always be ruled out uh, uh, during. Uh, diagnosis of the duodenal atresia. Other associated uh, anomalies are esophageal atresia, uh, cholidocal cyst, biliary atresia. Up to one third of patients are associated with the trisomy 21, that is Down syndrome in cases of uh, duodenal atresia. These are the some associated anomalies with percentage of incidences, mostly Down syndrome, then annular pancreas, congenital heart disease, malrotation, uh, esophageal uh, tracheoesophageal fistulas, and others. In these uh, congenital, in these complexity of congenital heart disease and esophageal atresia, uh, association of esophageal atresia and uh, TEF is mostly uh, associated with severity, uh, morbidity, and mortality of, of the duodenal atresia. The syndrome associated with these are Dehling syndrome, Fingold syndrome, Joubert syndrome, Golden Heart syndrome. These mostly are the skeletal deformity. In Joubert syndrome, we have a, a, a cerebellar vermis agenesis. And Gray and Scandalicus uh, uh, classified duodenal atresia in three types. First type, which is most common, involved mucosal and uh, submucosal uh, membrane, and there is intact uh, muscle wall. In type 2, there is a, a complete atresia. However, both proximal and distal parts are connected by short fibrous cord. 
uh, in type 3, this is complete atresia with complete separation and also associate, associated with the mesenteric defect. Uh, uh, Windsock web is a variant of type 1 atresia in which the duodenal membrane due to uh, proximal uh, pressure and uh, 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 peristalsis ballooned out in uh, distally and which uh, because of this the obstruction appears little more distally than it is actually is in this as we can see the uh, ballooned out part of the membrane and we uh, usually do contrast radiography for the windsock web in which we can see the uh, ballooned out uh, 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 conical portion of the uh, membrane and the reflux of the biliary system and as the uh, for the variation of the obstruction, mostly 80% of the obstructions are uh, post ampullary. However, 20% are pre ampullary obstruction. Uh, bifid termination of bile duct are also seen in which the one limb of the bile duct open above and other one is below the level of obstruction. And the obs uh, complete obstruction are seen in 80% and incomplete obstruction is seen in 20%. This is the variation of bile duct. In, as we can see, the bifid termination of the bile duct or the mo more common uh, proximal obstruction, uh, proximal uh, opening of the bile duct. In uh, prenatal diagnosis, uh, mostly in the antenatal USG, uh, maternal polyhydrominose is seen in the 17 to 75% of the uh, mothers. Uh, and that in this double bubble sign with the continuity between the two bubbles is seen. And this is mostly at the later stage of the pregnancy, most uh, usually at the seven to eighth month of pregnancy is seen. Whereas it needed hydrostatic pressure of the proximal uh, uh, the, uh, part of the uh, bowel and also depends on the degree of the duodenal obstruction. And the antenatal uh, USG is, uh, has low false positive values in cases of duodenal atresia. Other uh, investigation could be done uh, as karyotyping to screen for the chromosomal as anomalies associated with duodenal atresia. And also MRI could be done because, uh, to detect early uh, diagnosis and could be uh, planned accordingly. However, outcome of the treatment is not changed by the antenatal diagnosis. It only allows the uh, time for counseling and plan for delivery at the tertiary center with advanced care for surgical and like uh, surgical and ICU care. In this, as we can see the USG double bubble sign and in this MRI for the duodenal atresia. Um, postnatally, uh, baby is mostly present as the vomiting. Uh, vomiting as uh, uh, pay, uh, obstruction is very high in the GI tract and usually uh, present at the first day of life. As most common is the post ampullary obstruction, so BS vomiting is common. Uh, there is no minimal abdominal tension because of the upper uh, upper. Uh, obstruction. Babies are also present with dehydration and electrolyte imbalance, which is uh, uh, hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. And in case of incomplete duodenal obstruction, there could be delayed onset of symptoms. For diagnosis, we usually do a plain abdominal x-ray in which we uh, see a dilated stomach and uh, duodenum, a uh, double bubble sign with no gas beyond the obstruction of the duodenum. In cases of incomplete uh, duodenal obstruction, uh, contrast radiography could be seen. As we can see the in both these of the plain uh, uh, abdominal x-rays, there are two bubbles, duodenal uh, and the gastric bubble. The size of the uh, and the distance between the two bubbles could, could vary. In this, the contrast, uh, this is the contrast radiograph in which the, this is the stomach and the duodenum and there is the obstruction beyond the duodenum. Uh, as the baby arrives, we uh, uh, with the uh, if there is clinical suspicion with the uh, distension or vomiting, we do the plain ex abdominal X-ray. Then the USG abdomen is uh, done to rule out the other animal uh, anomalies, mostly malrotation. Then two uh, D echo X-ray spine and renal USG is also done uh, to screen the uh, to rule out the uh, other vector anomalies. Uh, to, uh, for the differential diagnosis, malrotation with uh, volvulus is mostly associated uh, with same symptoms. And this could be ruled out by the Doppler USG or upper GI contrast study and requires emergency intervention. And any unit with bilious vomiting is considered as ma uh, malrotation unless proven otherwise. Uh, and other anomaly, extrinsic obstruction, cause of extrinsic obstruction in duodenum is the pre duodenal portent weight, which can may coexist with duodenal atresia, but only diagnosed. Uh, diagnosed intraoperatively. 
then second uh, we come to uh, jejunal ileal atresia the incidence of this is uh, one in 5000 like births and it has equal incidence in both male and female almost one in third infants of jejunal atresia are premature and uh, mostly it comprises of at, uh, jejunal ileal atresia and the stenosis and uh, combinedly forms the most common congenital anomalies of small intestine uh, it is all, uh, it almost equally distributed between the jejunum and the ileum and the uh, uh, genetic association however is mostly related to the type 3 and the type 4 of the jejunal ileal atresia most of the all of the atresias are autosomal recessive uh, uh, the rare uh, colonic atresia are mixed linked recessive then the, for the etiopathogenesis of the uh, jejunal ileal atresia, it start uh, first started by the Blend Sutton in the 1889, who postulated that the atresia occurred at the site uh, site of obliterative embryological events, and he quoted the atrophy of the vitelline duct. Then the Tendler theorized that uh, intestinal atresia are uh, secondary to a failure of the recanalization or the vacuolization of the solid core stage of the bowel development. Uh, then in uh, law, uh, 1955, Law and uh, uh, suggests that the late intrauterine mid-centric vascular accidents were responsible for the most jejunal allele atresia. And Bernard demonstrated that by inter uh, uh, interrupting the mesenteric vessels in fetal uh, puppies, which forms a congenital uh, jejunal atresia. The classification of the jejunal ileal are first initially proposed by the Allow and uh, Bernard, uh, who divided atresia in three types, one, two, and three, and uh, further modified by the Grossfeld, who divided uh, type three in two, three A, and three B, and further added the type four. And uh, according to this classification, type one has the membrane and web, which involve only mucosa and submucosa, and there is uh, intact muscular wall. Type two uh, has uh, a complete atresia with the uh, uh, fibrous band connecting to it. In type 3, a complete uh, uh, atresia is seen with uh, disconnected blind ends with the V-shaped mesenteric uh, defect. In type 3b, there is apple peel, Christmas tree or maple deformity in which the helical formation of the distal bowel. And this uh, type 4 has the multiple atresia in, the, in which uh, atresia could be uh, from the type 1 to type 3 and it could be there. These all are the type, uh, in as you can see, type 1, there is intact muscular swells in which no grossly disconnection of the two bowel and only mucosa and submucosa in, involved. In second, there is fibrous band connecting to two atretic uh, proximal and distal parts. In type 3, there is V-shaped uh, 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 mesenteric defect with two uh, complete atretic parts. In uh, type 3B, apple peel appearance in as uh, uh, the distal bowel hel form heli uh, helix around the vessel. In type 4, there is multiple uh, uh, atresia. And this is known as string of sources appearance. In type 1, as we uh, already uh, read the mucosa and submucosa intact muscularis, and grossly there is continuity of the bowel and the mesentery. In this, there is no sh foreshortening of the bowel, and the uh, in all atresia, uh, proximal bowel is dilated and the distal bowel is collapsed. In uh, type 1, there could be a wind soak effect could be seen as we discussed in the duodenal atresia. And uh, type 2, there is a blind, uh, complete blinding of the proximal and uh, distal uh, bowel and with the connection of the fibrous cord. And the in, uh, increased pressure of the intraluminal pressure and the hypertrophic bowel of the proximal bowel leads to a uh, bowel ischemia. And the distal collapse bowel uh, commences with the blind uh, ending. Then comes to type 3. In type 3, 3A is a uh, complete separation with V-shaped mesentery defect. And the dilated uh, proximal bowel is aperistaltic uh, and can undergo a torsion or sub, uh, become over distended with subsequent necrosis or perforation. In type 3b, the, uh, it is mostly uh, in the proximal jejunal atresia and caused because of the absence of the superior mesenteric artery beyond the origin of the middle colic branch. In this large mesenteric defect uh, occurs which uh, associated with the shortened bowel and the distal bowel forms a helix around the uh, single perfusing vessel which mostly arise from the ileocolic or right colic arcade and the mostly uh, hence mostly present with the volvulus and hence uh, are at risk for impaired vascularity 
type for uh, atresia multiple atresia could be seen which could be because uh, from the type 1 to type 3 and um, one third of the infant of the atresia uh, comes in the type 4 it is also seen in association with the severe immunodeficiency familial form of the multiple intestinal atresia is the involvement of the, uh, of the, almost all the bowel from stomach duodenum and small and large bowel and associated with prematurity and the shortened bowel length and mostly uh, it is fatal till death Clinical and clinical presentation of jejunal allial atresia, antenatally polyhydrominose is uh, associated in the uh, mother uh, and the distended intestinal lobes can be seen in the late fetal USG. There is, can be a uh, presence of calcification could be seen in cases of meconic, uh, meconium peritonitis if there is in utero perforation. However, prenatal studies are not that reliable in the uh, jejunal allial uh, atresia. Fetal MRI uh, is a... Uh, 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 prefer over the USG. Uh, in uh, postnatally, uh, there is a, a vomit. Uh, symptoms are vomiting, which could be uh, first, uh, which could present at the first or second day of life. Uh, uh, depends on the level of the obstruction of the jejunum or a uh, ileum. Then the abdominal distension is also dependent. If there is uh, more the obstruction is, um, distally, more is the abdominal distension. If in, uh, in case of perforation, there is severe distension with uh, respiratory distress with severe uh, abdominal distension. And a uh, patient can also pass meconium, um, mostly gray flux of mucus uh, or blood in case of ischemic bowel could be seen per rectally. Uh, this is the clinical presentation of all uh, polyhydrominos, wireless vomiting, abdominal distension, and or failure to pass meconium. It uh, mostly seen in jejunal uh, atresia. Uh, polyhyd um, polyhydrominos is uh, seen uh, more common, and uh, in uh, um, abdominal distension, as we can see, uh, mostly seen in the distal obstruction. Then for diagnosis, we use a plain abdominal x-ray in which the dilated intestinal loop with multiple air fluid levels and there are no uh, uh, pelvic shadow is the uh, diagnostic criteria for, uh, for the jejunal allial uh, atresias. And also in contrast studies, there is the microcolon could be seen, which is the uh, classic uh, appearance of the non-used or unused colon uh, because of the atresia or obstruction. Then uh, contrast cinema could be also be uh, done as the microcolon from the disuse, uh, which uh, is the no contrast refluxing into the dilated bowel. And it also can be therapeutic simultaneously for the meconium plug, meconium ileus, or small left uh, uh, colon syndrome. In the differential diagnosis for the microalial uh, atresia is uh, R malrotation, colonic atresia, midgut volvulus, meconium ileus, duplication cyst, ileus due to sepsis, or hash trunk disease, or total colonic acalemias. Further management part would be deal with. Coming to the management part, what your ordinal atresia? As mentioned by Dr. Ananya, the preoperative workup will be done. And preoperative, coming to preoperative management, it is a physiological emergency. The priority is to stabilize the patient. Here we insert a orogastric tube for gastric decompression. IV fluids are given for resuscitation and to correct the electrolyte imbalance. We have to ensure that the body heat is preserved and hypoglycemia is avoided. And patient can be taken up for surgery as a relative emergency. Surgical options for duodenal atresia include duodenal duodenostomy, which is Kimura diamond shape, or side to side anastomosis, gastro jejunostomy, and duodenal jejunostomy. Patient positioning Patient is positioned in supine position with roll underneath the abdomen. For Kimura's duodenal duodenostomy, a transfer supra umbilical in two centimeter incision is placed above the umbilicus from midline to the lateral border of rectus. The approximate length of the incision is 5 cm. Also, omega-shaped supra-umbilical incision or trans-umbilical incision can be taken. Abdominal muscles are divided, peritoneal cavity is opened, liver is retracted superiorly, ascending colon is retracted medially and downwards. Proximal duodenum is freed from the retroperitoneal attachments. Distal duodenum is mobilized depending upon the area of atresia, location of atresia. Uh, we do not manipulate the medial portion of the duodenum in order to avoid injury to CBD and ampulla. 
After that, we identify the presence of other anomalies, including annular pancreas preduodenal portal vein. A uh, tube in the stomach should be passed distally up to the duodenum to locate the point of obstruction as well as to rule out winds of deformity. After that, the ligament of treats is divided uh, in for proper mobilization. So that proper mobilization can be done below the superior mesenteric vessels. It also helps in tension-free anastomosis and also helps to rule out pseudo malnutrition, uh, mal malnutrition, which is due to grossly dilated duodenum, which display displaces the right column. Traction sutures are placed over the proximal duodenum, which helps in mobilization. Proximal segment is made to lie over the distal segment of the duodenum. Then, gallbladder is gently compressed to locate the ampule of water, and stay sutures are placed at the corners before starting the incision. A transverse incision is placed over the proximal dilated duodenum along the anti mesenteric border. Uh, it should be one centimeter away from the arteritic segment to avoid ampulla. Longitudinal incision is made distal to the level of obstruction over the smaller limb. A transanastomatic tube is placed so that early initiation of feeding can be done. For diamond-shaped anastomosis, here the principle is each corner of the incision in the proximal limb is approximated to the uh, to approximate the midpoint of the incision over the distal limb, such that a point uh, C dash meets C, point D dash meets D, and point B dash meets B, and point A dash meets A. A single layer anastomosis with interrupt in an interrupted manner using vitreal 5-0 or 6-0 can be done. Posterior knots are uh, taken in uh, a posterior layer knotting is done inside, and anterior layer, layer knotting is done outside the uh, outside the lumen of the intestine. The right colon is placed back in position, and wound closure is done in layers involving peritoneum, posterior fascia, anterior fascia, and skin. Laparoscopic duodenostomy was first reported by Bax and Rothenberg in 2002. It has the advantage of excellent visualization and uh, uh, establishment of full feeds, hospital stays, and date of complications comparable to that with open surgery. As per spied, spied early, uh, early initiation of feeding can be made as compared to open group when it comes to laparoscopic duodenostomy. Position, uh, patient uh, is supine, surgeon and assistant stand on the foot end of the patient and abdomen is insufflated with 6 to 8 mm pressure of uh, carbon dioxide at 1.5 liters per minute rate. 3 mm instruments are used. Umbilical port is uh, used for camera and two right-sided ports in the right lumbar and the right hypochondri uh, right lumbar and the right iliac fossa are used for uh, working. Uh, uh, Port in the left uh, uh, left side of the epigastrium can be used for retraction of the liver. Falciform ligament is ret retracted by a stay suture as shown uh, with a red rubber catheter placed in between. Also, liver can be retracted uh, using, uh, uh, using a retractor in the right upper quadrant. After that, we mobilize the colon and duodenum. Stay sutures are passed through the dilated portion of the duodenum to view the distal duodenum. A diamond shaped anastomosis is performed and distal bowel is examined to rule out any other anomaly. This is a laparoscopic view of the completed duodenal duodenostomy. And uh, a dye study done on post operative day 5 shows no evidence of any leak. The disadvantages, of mal -rotation, uh, disadvantages with uh, laparoscopic surgeries that mal rotation can be missed, that can be difficult in visualization of the distal bowel segment, and low, uh, uh, low birth weight babies are a relative contraindication. Annular pa pancreas. For an annular pan pancreas, we never divide the pancreatic tissue as it may result into injury to the main pancreatic duct, resulting into pancreatitis, uh, pancreatic fluid leak. We always bypass the obstruction. Uh, this is done by dividing the ligament of treats to mobilize the distal segment of the duodenum and uh, followed by which duodenal duodenal stomach is possible. For duodenal web, a longitudinal incision is made above the transition zone on the anterior surface of the duodenum. Web is usually seen between second and third part of the duodenum. Ampullo better opens into the medial part of the web so that we excise the web uh, from all the laterally all along, but we leave a medial one-third portion of the web intact and close the duodenum transverse. Side-to-side -side duodenostomy. Here we approximate the proximal and distal ends with the two stage sutures. Parallel one-centimeter incisions are made 
transanostomotic nasogastric nasojejunal tube of five prime site is passed and anterior and posterior hair anastomosis is done using interrupted sutures using vitreal fibers subtotal duodenectomy it is done whenever there is obstruction of the duodenal uh, distal duodenum uh, as it is suggestive of poor function uh, du uh, here duodenectomy is done with the preservation of ampulla and jejunum is anastomized to the uh, tapered proximal segment of the duodenum Some surgeons prefer doing gastrostomy if poor feeding is expected. A transanastomotic tube is inserted via gastrostomy. For duodenal jejunostomy, it it is done in cases of uh, in case when there is difficulty in duodenal duodenostomy. Here we perform side to side anastomosis. The loop of jejunum is brought through the mesentery of the transverse colon in a retrocolic manner. It is usually done whenever there is obstruction involving third and fourth part of the duodenum. Gastro jejunostomy. This is least preferred because it results into chronic biliopancreatic reflux. Other complications involve marginal ulceration, blind loop syndrome. Coming to mega duodenum, here uh, first part of duodenum is dysfunctional. There is absence of effective peristalsis. Uh, here division of the ligament of treads helps in mobilization. Uh, Here we perform tapering duodenos, uh, duodenoplasty, which can be done by suture application, GI stapler resection, needle tip cautery, and suture closing. It has improved postoperative outcome. Coming to postoperative complications, intraoperative complications involve damage to biliopancreatic system. Uh, early complications involve anastomotic leak, obstruction, ileus, and wound infection. Late complications involve adhesive bowel obstruction and duodenal dysmotility. Postoperative care. Uh, there is prolonged bilious aspirate from the nasogastric tube because of the inability of the dilated duodenum to produce effective peristalsis. If transanastomotic tube has been uh, early initiation of feeding can be done. Oral initiation is usually delayed depending upon the uh, output of the nasogastric aspirate. It is usually one to two weeks or longer, and anastomotic complications are anticipated. UGI study should be done. Postoperative outcomes: mortality rate is five to ten percent, and the main contributors for mortality and morbidity are associated cardiac anomalies, prematurity, low birth weight, and vascular problems. Coming to jejunal ileal aphasia, uh, here uh, the preoperative management involves gastric decompression, fluid management for maintenance as well as re replacement, correction of electrolyte abnormalities and hematological abnormalities, abdominal X-ray, contrast anemia, and prophylactic antibiotics. Steps: uh, supra umbilical transverse incision is taken two to three centimeter above the umbilicus, or a small circum umbilical incision can be made, as it is more uh, aesthetically appear. It it gives more aesthetically appearing scar. A laparoscopy can also be done for the diagnosis and exteriorization of the atriatic ends of the bowel through the umbilical port for primary anastomosis. After opening the abdominal cavity, bowel is exteriorized to know the site and type of atresia, as well as associated atresia, which are seen in ten to twenty percent of the cases in stenosis. Uh, proximal bowel uh, for proximal bowel, maximal dilatation is seen at the point of obstruction, which is usually hyperperistaltic, and the viability is questionable. Uh, and the distal bowel is usually seen as collapsed, tiny worm-like structure. After that, saline is instilled into the lumen to check the patency. Mal rotation is corrected. Uh, total length of the bowel, should, uh, which plays the most important role when it comes to prognosis, should be two fifty centimeters. The suture. Uh, after that, we suture the disproportionate proximal and the distal blind ends. After application of a uh, traumatic bowel clamps, six to eight centimeters from the distal blind end. And uh, intervening segment is distended by uh, injecting half normal saline, as shown. After that, atriatic area along with the distended and collapsed bowel are isolated. Proximal hypertrophic bowel should always be resect, uh, resected to. Uh, proximal hypertrophic bowel should always be resected to approximate the normal bowel diameter for adequate postoperative function. In order to ensure adequate uh, post uh, adequate functioning of the intestine, the uh, minimal length of the intestine should be seventy five centimeters along with ileocecal wall. The bowel is divided at right angles, and end to end anastomosis is performed. 
for distal bowel, uh, the distal bowel is transected slightly obliquely to produce a fish mouth, which ensures equal approximation of uh, proximal and distal lumen. Also, chital slit can be put uh, to in order to uh, rule out the discrepancy in the lumen of the proximal and the distal part. For anastomosis, end to side or end to back anastomosis is done using 5060 PDS. Uh, posterior edges are in, uh, sutured in interrupted manner with to, uh, not tied onto the mucosal aspect, and anterior edges are, interrupted, uh, are sutured in interrupted manner with not tied on the serocell uh, surface. Alternative technique, whenever there is a discrepancy of 4 is to 1, extra mucosal anastomosis with end to end suturing, such that larger bites are taken on the proximal bubble and smaller on the distal bubble, can be done. Mesentery defect, defect is repaired in an interrupted manner. For long segment atresia, imbrication can be done, tapering enteroplasty, inversion, plication of the proximal mega duodenum using 22 French catheter without excision can be done. This preserves mucosa, it prevents short bubble syndrome. Coming to type 1 atresia, dissection and anastomosis is done. And uh, diaphragm is perforated and dilated with the picture. Here, as shown in the uh, picture, a uh, technique of seromuscular stripping and inversion and plication is shown. It preserves the mucosal surface for absorption and prevents unveiling of the plication. Uh, here, uh, tapering and tetoplasty is shown, where uh, type 3 uh, genital atresia is shown and the repair is performed after decompression of the proximal colon uh, using 26 French catheter. And it is placed along the mesenteric border and the bowel is then tapered and sutured, as shown in the picture. Also, GIS taper can be used for the same and followed by which uh, uh, followed by which another uh, reinforcing suturing is done uh, when uh, when it comes to a uh, type 4 atresia uh, the where we have to preserve a uh, maximum length of the intestine we uh, multiple uh, different procedures can be can be undertaken like tapering enteroplasty multiple anastomosis and a uh, simple enteroplasty can be done so that uh, adequate bowel length is preserved. For high jejunal atresia, derotation of bowel followed by back resection of the, into the second part of duodenum is done, followed by also tapering duodenoplasty can be done or linear seromuscular tripping and inversion plication is done, followed by bowel anastomosis. Fashioning stoma in the form of Bishop Cook, Santolini, Blank, and double barrel are not advocated at this stage because of gross intraperitoneal contamination and unsafe primary anastomosis. Coming to post-operative care, nasogastric uh, decompression is continued until peristalsis is established. Feeding is delayed until gastric aspirate is non-bilious, abdominus non-distended, and patient has passed meconium. A transanastomotic uh, feeding tube if a transanastomotic feeding tube is placed, feeding can be commenced within 24 hours. If there is suspicion of leak, radiograph can be done which shows air under diaphragm. Patient sh uh, should be immediately taken for re-exploration. Other late complications involve stenosis because of the ischemia, adhesive obstruction, perforation because of transanastomotic feed. Outcomes over, overall survival is almost 90% because of improved perioperative care and Improvement in the medical and surgical management of short bowel syndrome, jejunal atresia has excellent outcome. As per Red Cross War Memorial Hospital, uh, as per a study done by the Red Cross War Memorial Hospital involving 160 patients, the survival rate was 92%. The main mortality contributors were type 3 jejunal atresia, which had the highest mortality, especially type 3, followed by type 3B, followed by type 3A, and then type 2. Proximal bowel infarction plus peritonitis. Uh, missed distal atresia with uh, anastomotic leg and atresia with gastroscrisis. Coming to colonic atresia, here proximal resection, a primary resection and anastomosis is done whenever the atresia is proximal to splenic flexure of colon or uh, it is an uncomplicated case. Whereas colostomy with anastomosis at a later stage is done whenever the atresia is distal to splenic flexure or there is perforation uh, peritonitis or uh, the viability of the bowel is questionable. Uh, for type 1 atresia, prim primary anastomosis is performed. For type 2 and type 3 atresia, excessive prod. If the proximal bowel is excessively dilated, it is resected, a chitral sleeve can be placed and then anastomosis is performed. Uh, for post-operative care, we ensure that the TPN is started earliest 
uh, gastric uh, pizza has started once gastric aspirate has decreased and colostomy is closed after two to three months of age. Uh, coming to outcomes, there are improved outcomes because of early diagnosis, improved neonatal, uh, neonatal anesthetic and intensive care. Mortality rate is 9 to 33%. It is mainly because of late diagnosis, nutritional deficiency and infection. Thank you. Thank you, Kavit.